What's up guys, we are back with another Marvel Legends review, but we're doing something a little bit different today, as something a little bit more robust, I suppose, because there's a lot of stuff in this box. Today we're taking a look at the Rider series, Cosmic Ghost Rider. So of course we've got our figure, and then we've got this absolutely massive space motorcycle. So there's a lot of stuff in this box that I have no knowledge on, have no idea what's going on here, but... He looks really cool, and I could not pass this guy up. So we've got him here in the standard larger format box for the Riders line. So it's the same kind of box you're used to for Legends. It's just about three times as wide. You've got the figure there and the bike in the window. Logo down there on the bottom. Got some artwork on the side. And then the back of the package has got some great promotional artwork of the figure and the bike and how it all hooks together and what it looks like as a finished product. So let's do it. Let's pull him out and take a look. And here he is out of the box, our Cosmic Ghost Rider. So a character, a figure that I really don't have any familiar with, but I did of course do a little research and found that this guy is certainly more than I expected him to be. Although when it comes down to it, I should have known Cosmic and Ghost Rider kind of hinted the fact that he has the power cosmic. It's right there in the name. So this guy is actually really cool. It's a weird, crazy mashup, and of course it's an alternate uh, alternate reality type of thing. One of the other universes in the Marvel Universe. And he's just cool looking. I mean, that's really all it comes down to. He was cool looking. I don't care about him. I don't necessarily have to have this figure, but I wanted him. And I think I got a pretty cool toy out of it because there is a lot of cool stuff going on here. I cannot for the life of me think of what parts reuse might be going on here. Someone let me know. There has to be something going on here. I just don't see that this is 100% new. Maybe it is, maybe it's not. Ultimately, it doesn't really matter. So let's see what this guy can do as far as articulation because there is some, some different stuff going on here. So to start with, you do have a dome over his head. It still allows you to rotate because of just how tight fitting it is, but you can pop that off and his head can move a little bit more because of the fact that it's on such a long neck stem there. He does have this fire to kind of work around, so you can tilt him side to side, full rotation, and then you can look him up. But he can't really do that inside of the dome. You'll have to work around the confines of that thing. But if you want to use it without it, he has a lot more mobility. The arms go out at the shoulder. The shoulder pads are rubbery and they're attached towards the collar, so it helps to move them a little bit more. They, of course, uh, do go all the way around, but you can only go so far, which is probably far enough. You've got your bicep swivel. We've got double jointed elbows here. And then of course you've got rotation and hinges at those wrists. He has a diaphragm cut. So he goes sideways, pretty good. Backwards really well, but you'll get gapping if you go far enough. And then he goes forward. And of course you can rotate all the way around. He has no crunch though, and there's no waist twist. You've got these really, really wide set hips, which definitely are they have to be really they have to be designed for the bike and they definitely work so they go out about that far and they're at neutral he definitely does look kind of weird but it's not really that bad and certainly not rubbing me the wrong way or anything he kicks forward about that far he kicks backward you've got a thigh cut double jointed knees of course but they only go so far and then you've got rotation down at the ankle you've got hinges as well and then you've also got rocker. So he has most of what you would expect a Marvel Legends figure to have, and most of it works just fine. He is kind of confined because of the dome here. It does stop you from doing some things, but otherwise he's pretty standard when it comes to the line. There's nothing too crazy, nothing really missing here. He's a pretty normal figure. Of course, where things kind of really go off the rails is the design on this guy. So, I mean, I'm not really one for spoilers, I suppose, but as far as this comic book goes, I mean, this is the Punisher with the powers of the Ghost Rider, with the powers of the Power Cosmic. So he is the Ghost Rider who also is a Herald of Galactus on a crazy mission to kill Thanos. And then there's a baby Thanos involved and all sorts of nonsense. And he just looks ridiculous. There is so much stuff going on with this figure. I really, really dig how they incorporated the Punisher symbol into his armor. I think it looks really good. It's very spacey, very demonic as well. You've of course got very much like Iron Man style of legs down here, which go with side of kind of a cosmic look. You've got these little bands here, which, which they are echoed on his motorcycle, which we'll see shortly. And then you've got this little kind of speckle paint job almost, which very much gives a, it gives a star background, like a star field kind of background, just some sort of galactic look really. There's not much going on on the backside. He does have a metallic pearlescent style finish on the majority of the gray parts, which I'm a big fan of, just in terms of the overall look. And then you've got these big monstrous 
spiked shoulder pads here, which still give off a very... Something about those just scream kind of cosmic thing to me. They look like something that you would see in the Marvel Cosmic Universe, but at the same time, when you think about them, yeah, it certainly seems like something a particular kind of Ghost Rider might have as well. There is no paint on these, but there is a decent sculpt on them. The spikes are all varying lengths, and then they're all pitted and worn and beaten and battered. So there's a lot to take in on this figure, but I think they did a really solid job. Sculpt is cool and fun, and the paint job, while not over the top really, there's not tons of paint on this guy, what is there is quite clean. Of course, there is still a lot going on in the head and the just above the neck region. So you've got the dome here, which of course works fine. I'm not so sure, is this truly something that's needed for a power cosmic wielding Ghost Rider? He's certainly not alive. So I guess this is just for aesthetics and it does come off really easily. I like him with it, but I also really like him without it. So you can take it off, put it back on if you want. Of course, like I mentioned, it does kind of impede things. But there is a great skull sculpt under here. Skull sculpt, that's kind of difficult to say. And you've got this little fire effect that sits around his head. If you pop the head off, you could still take that off if you didn't want it. So you've got the yellow fire, and then you've got the slightly pinkish to red hue skull, which is, of course, fully translucent. It just happens to be painted over top. And then you've got those yellow eyes. You can't really go wrong with a cosmic-powered Ghost Rider just in a general design standpoint, works really well, and it translates to figure form quite nicely, and I'm a big fan of everything that's going on with this head sculpt. Give me a skeleton man, give me a flaming painted translucent skull, and you've got my money. Now, as far as accessories goes, and we're not talking bike accessories, we're talking about weaponry here. He comes with what I assume is probably the same stuff he should be getting, just I don't really know. So you've got to start with, the most important thing for a Ghost Rider, you've got the Flame Whip, and this thing is fantastic. We've got a fully translucent uh, yellow and orange chain flame whip here, and I think this is fantastic. It's, uh, it's yellow at the base to the flames, and then you've got a little bit of yellow coming out of the end. He holds it really well. It's got, of course, a nice arcing sculpt to it, so you can use it in motion. It's very dynamic. Works really well. Translucent plastic. You kind of got me right there. And then we've got some guns. So these are things that I'm not familiar with. I'm assuming this is something that this particular Ghost Rider uh, uses. So you've got two very futuristic looking guns and they are different, different sculpt. And uh, they, they hold fine in either hand. And they've both got unique uh, flame energy kind of effects that pop out of the end. They, they pop on and off so you can just take them off if you don't want to use them. And he does have holsters for these on the bike so you can't use the holsters and the energy effects at the same time, but that wouldn't make sense anyway. And it's more of that same cosmic fire type of look. So yellow to orange and then to a little bit of red on this guy here. So two cool paintless but unique sculpts and some energy effects and a chain whip that is translucent plastic. I mean, come on, what more could you ask for on this Ghost Rider? And then, of course, we have this big monster space bike to talk about. And again, this is something that I really don't have any frame of reference for. Not familiar with the design, outside of the fact that I thought it was a cool-looking toy, and I'll be damned if it's not a cool-looking toy. So this thing has a lot of plastic. It's about a foot long from front to back. So you've got your big energy ball here, and you do have to put these pieces together. They just clasp around the front forks of the bike. And then there's two energy effects that give it a little lightning crackle effect that are inside of there as well. There's a decent sculpt on this thing. It very much looks spacey, futuristic. Again, I'm not familiar with the design, but it certainly looks good enough from what little research I did. It certainly looks good. Some paint on it, not tons, but it does have some. You've got different finishes as far as metallic, translucent, the pearlescent uh, type of finishes that we see on Legends. You've got your big flame energy effect that comes out of the booster back here. He does have a flight stand, and this does seem to be exactly the same thing that comes with the Enfys Nest Black Series speeder, which is kind of rare. We don't see stuff like that between Hasbro lines all that often. And it does have a ball peg, so it allows you to angle him backwards and forwards and side to side to hold certain poses. It works really well. I've had no issues with it. And then you've got holsters for his guns. So you've got one on this side and then you've got one on this side. They are different because of course, like I mentioned, they are different guns as far as sculpt. They're not the same thing. And then he fits on it pretty well. I really have no issues sitting him on it, no issues posing him. And he certainly just looks like a badass driving this thing. So it's a humongous vehicle, especially for what we have been getting in this line, but I think they really knocked it out of the park. And because why not, and well, because I've got 
easy access to a couple of these right now. We've got a comparison between some other Ghost Riders. So this is the most recent one over here. This is the Riders Ghost Rider. There is, of course, another one that came out in the mainline release, the black one, which I don't have. And then we've got one of whichever wave of figure this is, Terax, maybe? The one that had the variant, so there's an orange one and there's a blue one. And you can see, I mean, this guy's very, very different. This guy's also very, very different. There's not a whole lot to really compare to because they are all so unique from each other. The only thing that's consistent among them is that this guy also has the same energy effect, well, whip here, as this guy's uh, flame energy uh, whip. So you've got one little thing there. The rest of these figures, though, they're all quite different versions of the same sort of character. So yeah, even for a version of Ghost Rider slash Punisher slash whatever in the hell you want to call him, I'm really happy with the way this turned out. I think you've got a really cool figure on your hands, whether you care about the bike or not, just at the outset. The figure is a lot of fun. He has a crazy wild design, stands out on the shelf, awesome paint applications, really cool head sculpt, and then he has three really great accessories. I have no issues with anything he comes with. The bike really is just icing on the cake. I would have been fine personally if he didn't even come with it. I just like the figure on its own, but the bike really sells this thing as the complete package, because there definitely would have been people complaining if he didn't come with it. The bike is, of course, on its own, really well done as well. He sits on it nicely, it's got good paint applications, it fits on that stand really well, and it's huge, and it looks great. So if you're a fan of this character, there's really no reason not to get this. And if you're like me and you don't know anything about this, there's still probably a number of reasons to get him because there's a lot of fun to be had here. So that's going to do it for this look at the Marvel Legends Rider series, Cosmic Ghost Rider. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And until next time.